Hello, I'm Atubo John. Now, this is a new week. Praise God. And listen, God is doing something new in your life. I remember he said, we are in the season of restoration. And he's restoring the years that have passed. Now, listen, I've told you this before. For God to restore things to you, the first thing he needs to do is to restore your knowledge. See, he needs to set the foundation right. You remember Elijah when he wanted to call down fire from heaven, you know, with the prophets of Baal. And when, when he was ready, he didn't just say, okay, now you guys couldn't do it, let me do it. And oh God, send down fire. No, he had to reset the altar. See, the altar that will carry that fire cannot be the same altar that they have been struggling with. You get that. So the, the, the knowledge that is going to bring restoration to you cannot be the same knowledge that was causing you to walk in ignorance in the first place. You get what I'm saying? So when the Lord says, I'm restoring the years that have passed, you should go before him and say, Lord, I, I bring myself under the authority of your truth that you will teach me and, and you will begin to lead me in that path of restoration. And as a, as a sign from the Lord, your knowledge will begin to increase. See, he will begin to knock off some things that are not so, that are not true. There are lots of things we believe in that are not true. They have no foundation. You know, for example, on Friday I was sharing with you that Jesus didn't come because Adam and Eve sinned. In other words, if Adam and Eve had not sinned, you know, they've not, they had not eaten that fruit, would Jesus still have come? The answer is yes, Jesus would have still come. Is it why? You know, that's the thing. We, we don't really understand what Jesus came to do. We just think Jesus came as a second Adam to replace the first Adam. <laughs> no, no, no. It goes from the, it goes back to the beginning. You know, God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let him have dominion over everything that he has created. Now then, God said that in Genesis chapter 1. And this is the thing about the Bible a lot of people don't understand. You see, you know, that's why I always try to define this thing so, so you get it in the right perspective. I told you before, the Bible, it's not the Word of God. There's a big difference between the Bible and the Word of God. Now understand this. In the Bible, there is the Word of God. Say how? Because God spoke in the Bible. But clear your mind from these thoughts that God sat down with some people and began to dictate to them what to write. And then they began to write. And they said, this is the word of God. So we'll carry the Bible and say, this is the word of God. No, that's not true. See, so, so I define the Bible to be this. And I want you to take note of this. If you can write it down somewhere, write it down. <laughs> Praise God. When you do, put my name there. Because I'm the one that brought the knowledge to you. Praise God. So, listen. The Bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who received the word of God, what they did with it, and what their outcome was or is. You know, it depends on how you put it. Did you get that? I said the Bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who received the word of God, what they did with it, and what's came out of their lives from how they responded to the word of God. Now that's what the Bible is all about. So it's telling us people's stories. Either the ones they wrote by themselves or the ones that was written about them. See? So in it we'll find out that they received something, the word of God. Now that's the most important part of any testimony that you, you're going to hear. If someone is sharing his testimony, and you cannot pinpoint where he received the word of God. There is no proof that that thing came from God. This is the truth. You know, sometimes when we share testimonies, we just say, oh, praise God, I didn't have a car before, now I have a car. And then, praise God, wow, it doesn't mean that car came from God. You say, but he's not the giver of good things. Oh, oh, oh. Satan gives things too. And the things Satan gives will destroy you. That's why it's important. You've got to know that what you're receiving is from the Lord. Because if God gives it to you, there's an eternal life that backs it up. That thing can only give you life. Praise God. So, understand this about the scriptures. 
And that's the mentality you must take the scriptures with. It's a compendium of testimonies. And, and you know the funny thing? You need to add your own testimony to it. See? For example, Paul was writing letters to his friends and his partners. He didn't sit down to say, God, dictate to me the word of God. I want to write it and send it to people. No. He was writing a letter to his friends. And now, that's what we call scriptures today. So, you don't realize that your own letter to your friends, your own letter to your congregation, your own letter to, you know, whoever, your partners or people like that. They are scriptures also. Why? Because you, you got those things, those thoughts, those ideas from your fellowshipping with the Lord. That's why it's scriptures. So no, you're not writing. That, you know, that's why when a preacher is preaching also, you need to understand, is he preaching the word of God to me or is he preaching just later? Is he just talking? See, a, a preacher can preach from his knowledge of what he has read. It doesn't mean he's preaching the word of God to you. Now, your concern should always be, does this preacher have a relationship, a, a real working relationship with the Lord? Does he have it? If he has it, then the things he's going to share with you are going to come from that place of knowledge. See, not from what he has read, not from what he has studied, no matter how good it may sound. Praise God. We're going to dwell on this this week, and I pray the Spirit of God helps us to understand this truth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll continue tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.